In Atlanta Season 1, Episode 9, we follow Ern and Vanessa as they go to a Juneteenth event so that she can network and find a job. This event is being held by a wealthy interracial couple, a black woman and a white male. This couple is high up there and they have lots of connections. As Ern and Vanessa go through the house, it's almost like going through an African museum. The white husband seems to have an obsession with black culture. The entire house is decorated with African art, artifacts, music, pictures of him with other black people, mainly black people. I don't see any pictures with uh, white people in that episode. And at one point during the dinner, he recites a spoken word poem the way an inner city black poet would at Def Jam Poetry. Throughout most of the episode, the white husband spits a lot of the typical pro-black talking points on black experience in the US and in the Americas in general over the last 400 to 500 years. Some points being valid and others not so much so. He's likable to a fault and says all the right things and all the right talking points that would make any black person light up. He also has white guilt and seems to cuddle Earn with pity a lot, which is typical white liberal behavior. The episode doesn't just poke fun at white liberalism though. Like good comedy, it makes fun of everybody, because we're all stupid. They meet a stereotypical black playwright whose story is about typical black tropes. Her story involves gangbangers, pastors, meshed in a way that you'd expect from a Medea movie. They also meet a reverend who's a complete hypocrite. And this right here is the brilliance of Atlanta, and good writing. Writers, take note. They reveal all the hypocrisy we all know about reverends in the black community without saying a word. The reverend is a tall, bald black man. He speaks with tenacity and strength, but underneath the surface, you can tell he's a pretty shallow guy. He keeps talking about money, repeatedly mentions his own mega church, and compliments Blair, the black lady who invited Vanessa to the event, in a flirty way right in front of his wife. Who, by the way, looks tired and annoyed as she's probably fed up with his self-importance, bullshit, and cheating. The whole event is one big hypocritical jerk-off fuckfest. If anything, it shows you don't have to go to some old rich white lady's party to meet the same typical bullshit. Some of these characteristics are more so characteristics of the rich and not a specific color. Not all rich people, of course, and before capitalists come down my neck, I'm not trying to incite a class war either. Or am I? The episode ends with Ern calling them out on their hypocrisy and how weird the whole party is and ridiculous, and Vanessa and Ern leave. The show makes fun of the extremes and tropes on both sides. White liberalism and its annoying, incessant pity, which doesn't even remove them from their power base the way they say it does, and black people and how we feed into the stereotypes as well by writing these things in our stories, from gang violence, slavery, and other black tropes. It's not bad to write these things in your stories and it's not bad to care and feel empathy with another race or culture. Obviously that's a good and necessary thing to create unity and to remind ourselves that we're all just fucking humans at the end. But when you crank it up a lot, it becomes too much and it doesn't achieve the unity you want. It just creates negative stereotypes, imagery, and further division. Think about it this way. A lot of cultures do this, if not all. Every culture feeds into a certain stereotype and they put that into their media. Most people aren't aware or smart enough to know that what they see in the media is just surface level and people are beyond the surface level. Every culture has its nuances, details, good and bad. The mainstream media will rarely ever show that. So with that being said, you can't make a judgment of the surface level, but that's what people do. So when black people watch Asian films and they mostly see Chinese guys flying around with swords and kicking each other, they assume every Chinese person knows Kung Fu and that they all probably eat dogs and rats or something like that. And when Chinese people turn on their television and see black people in BET acting a fool, twerking, and a bunch of other shit, they assume all black people are debauched, highly sexual, violent people. These types of imagery are the source of stereotypes and going a bit further, discrimination and racism. Now of course, racism and discrimination existed before the media, but nowadays the mainstream media can a lot of times be the source of it. The media and the mainstream ideals we adhere to can destroy our image because it ignores the common nuances of people. It ignores that every culture has fighters, debauchery, conservatism, liberalism, and more, and that there are spectrums within those things. Nothing is black and white, no pun intended. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe for more content and analyses just like this. Be safe, loving, and prosperous. Peace.